What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. I wish I had a bigger one. Mine is so small it makes me unhappy. But Coffee mug, I mean. I mean, need maybe two liter mug would barely sate me in the morning. Uh, I get coffee after I've put out hay for the horses and the bulls and the heifers. And then way too small. Yeah. But I don't know where to go get one. Bend! Bend, Spoon! Bend! By the power of my will alone! Bend! Nothing. I guess I'll have to do it the same way Uri Geller does it. Do you get my drift, son? Do you see the way things really are? The guy with the icy blue balls left a comment on one of my videos. He would not, of course, leave a comment on the video that I just uploaded that is a reply to his video. No, that would be wrong. That might imply that he might have actually watched my video, and he for damn sure is not going to. So he picked one of my more popular videos and left a comment. I thought I would share it. Drunken fool talking about insulting videos, apostrophe, but he chooses to go on others, no apostrophe, channel and insult them with name calling, two exclamation points. Has no tolerance for others, no apostrophe, opinion, three exclamation points. Talks like a drunken sailor and is one of the most insulting people I have ever encountered on YouTube. Three exclamation points. Words cannot possibly describe just how pleased I am to learn I am the most insulting person on YouTube. Woohoo! I win! That's precisely the effect I have been striving for for the past 18 years. Do I get a medal? I want a medal. Uh, uh, you know, solid gold would be good. Maybe encrusted with emeralds and diamonds and shit. <sighs> but the message continued. Incapable of having a civil conversation! Exclamation point. That's from the person who wrote back after I said I'm making a reply video and called me a drunken fool. <laughs> Civil conversation. In the same message, he called me a drunken fool three times. <laughs> I recall the last time I was drunk was in 1999. I was in Cabo San Lucas at a mooring on a vessel that I had signed aboard as navigator and lookout and, you know, third lieutenant shit. And I was in Cabo San Lucas for 38 days. And on the mooring next to the vessel I was on, the owner and the inventor of the CBQ barbecue for boats, which is a stainless steel barbecue that hangs over the transom of boats and shit. Motored up and moored, and then he launched his captain's gig and came aboard the vessel I was on and invited me and the rest of the crew on my vessel, the vessel I was on, to go into um, town um, on the beach, and there's a um, bar called The Office. And we motored, we beached the captain's gig onto the beach, and it was spring break. 
So, he bought drinks for everybody. And I mean everybody. There were hundreds of people on the beach. And it was not only spring break, but happy hour where if you buy one, you get one free. So, of, of course, I wanted one margarita. So, two showed up at once. Well, okay, I guess I'll have to drink them both. And then the CBQ guy, um, yeah, uh, two, and I was like, because I don't drink alcohol. No, really, I don't. And he saw that both glasses were empty, so he, you know, waved over to the waiter and said, He'll have another one! I didn't want. Two more arrived, so I drank those. And I kept going to my, my head, you know, I did not have permission to leave the vessel. How am I going to get back? You know, I can't even fucking walk, let alone swim back to the vessel. And, like, I, I drank three and a half, and then while the CBQ guy wasn't looking, I dumped over my shoulder the rest of the fourth margarita. And yes, he motioned for the waiter and said, He'll have another one! Two more showed up! And I drank them. So, I finally told the, you know, the party. There was a hell of a party. There was a college woman dancing on our table. And... I was, like, moving the margarita glasses around so that she wouldn't stomp on them and hurt herself, you know, trip and fall on her face. And uh, I told, you know, looking up the cracks of the dancing woman, I really have to go back to the boat now. I think I'm on watch. I think it's, I'm the officer at duty at the moment. And then told the uh, CBQ guy, yeah, I really need to go back. And so he said, yeah, yeah, I guess we have to go back. You know, it's been a fun time. So we went back to his captain's gig. And the gig had a rubberized floor. And so we shoved off. And... Dan Amundsen was with us. He was like 360 pounds, all of it blubber. And we shoved off, and I was, you know, up to here in the surf, and I'm shoving the boat farther, and then I tried to leap in, and it took maybe six efforts, and I finally leaped in, and my face was flat on the rubber floor of, of the gig. And then Dan Amundsen sat on me, sat on the back of my shoulders here, pressing my face with an airtight sill on the bottom of the gig. It, it, having that weight kind of felt, you know, like it was comfortable. It was sort of like a, you know, Japanese massage only with two big massive ape hams you know spread across my back uh, and yeah yeah okay I'm, I'm not going to complain because number one i can't scream because my face is you know airtight against the bottom of the vessel the gig and you know i figured i don't need to breathe it took maybe, I don't know, maybe 30 seconds before I, my brain decided, you know, I need to take a breath. And I couldn't because there's this massive one-seventh, actually one-sixth of a ton sitting on me. And so I started kicking because I couldn't, like, get my hands and, like, slap the lard off of me. And I was kicking and kicking and kicking, and finally Dan decided, oh, yeah, I'm sitting on somebody. And so he rolled his hams off of me, and I, like, rolled 
on the other side of my body and took a big deep breath and finally made it to the vessel that I was on. That was the last time I have been drunk. <sighs> there are some times when I wish I were, however, but I hate the taste of alcohol. If they could make it in pill form, I would like that, yes. But taste, no. Maybe like intravenously. Um, I assume there's no taste buds in an anus, so maybe suppository would work. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it.